좋게 부십초리 어이구 많이 비판만 걸었지 Welcome back to Sahara TV. My name is Rudolph Okonkwo. You are what all the round table. Wherever you might be in the world, you must have seen demonstrations and protests against America and Western interests. And we have serious questions about where the implication of all this and where that leads us to. The questions are, where does my right end? And where does the right, your right begin? Should there be a red line that nobody should cross? Who draws the blue line? How do you adjust world different value systems to fit into that red line? If the red line is crossed, who should enforce the punishment? If the right to free speech ends where your enemies speak, what happens when you become the enemy? Today on the show, we have two special guests. From Canada, we have Professor Pius Adesami, who is a professor of English and Literature at Carleton University in Ottawa, Canada. Professor Pius, welcome to Sahara TV. Professor Pius, welcome to Sahara TV. Oh, thank you, Rudolph. Sorry, I, I, I couldn't hear you. Okay. Okay. All right. And also from Maryland, we have uh, Mr. Chris Anidobe, who is a political commentator and an intellectual property attorney. Uh, Chris, welcome to Sahara TV. Thank you very much, Mr. Kongo. Thank you. All right. So let's start by, uh, I'll ask um, your first impression on what has been going on this week in all over the mainly Islamic world, but now it has spread to Australia and London and other parts of the world. Uh, Pius, what, do, what is your initial take? What, is, what do you think is going on beyond, beyond the theme that, that, that triggered this up? Yeah, beyond, beyond the theme. I, I, I think the, the theme is just... Um, uh, uh, something that has allowed uh, the pent up frustrations between between the, it's the, I think it's a clash of civilizations theme that runs through that and the unfortunate movie you know that one because I've seen it and it's it's really horribly poor taste it's provocative but I think it has just allowed it has just provided an outlet for the continuation of the ideological warfare between the Islamic world and 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 the western the western world you know uh, both in very loosely so it's really unfortunate what's been going on and if you ask me I I really don't think that uh, that the movie in itself, if it can be called a movie, uh, justifies the kinds of reactions that, that, I mean, in terms of the violence, the violence, you know. And um, by and large, I, I, I agree with what a friend of mine, you know, posted on Facebook, that there will always be, you know, uh, people who would do these kinds of, of things, you know, who would insult faith insult people's sensibilities gratuitously there will always be that so long as we've got this thing called freedom of speech and people don't know how to personally impose responsibility on the idea so there will always be things like this but a friend of mine you know uh, said something yesterday that i found quite um uh, instructive that by and large the islamic world would have to find uh a more intellectually appropriate way of responding to these kinds of, of provocations because nothing justifies what we saw in Benghazi. Not, nothing justifies the, the taking of human life uh, in reaction to, uh, to any kind of provocation. Okay, thank you. Chris, what, what is your take? Yeah. Yes, my, my, my take on it is that um, we do have what you, what you might call a religious tinderbox waiting for a match to light up the world. And what happened in that theme was just a match that people like Al-Qaeda have been waiting for. And so the Muslims all over the world uh, went on a deadly rampage, um, killing people, as you might expect. Um, however, um, one must point out that freedom of speech does have its limits. Um, 
although technically in the United States that gentleman did not break the law, it's understood that he can do it in any other country, particularly in the Arab countries, and still um, get away with his life. And so I think that um, um, there's a fair bit of responsibility there. Um, we don't like how the Muslims respond to some of these issues, but we can understand that um, somehow they, they might feel violated. And when they do feel violated, um, this is how they respond to issues. We agree. Islam does should find more intellectually responsive ways to deal with this. And Jesus Christ gets insulted um, all the time, and nobody is killing anyone. Um, but however, um, there's just no excuse in my mind to disrespect Islam the way the gentleman did. And apologies are really due on all sides. And I think that it's something the United States ought to be more sensitive to how Muslims feel and find the need to apologize at a very high diplomatic level without taking the stance that in the United States we have freedom of expression. I think that freedom of expression should go with sensitivity to cultural sensitivity, political sensitivity, so that we continue to live in a peaceful world. Um, let, me, let me ask you, Pius, uh, because yeah. we didn't see any demonstration in Saudi Arabia where you have Mecca and you have the, like, the heartland of Islam. Why, mm -hmm. why are they not demonstrating there, but in other parts of uh, the Arab countries, people are demonstrating? Yeah, you know, Saudi Arabia is a very, it's a very controlled society. It's a very uh, repressed, politically repressed society in a way. And, 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 I, and I think, or my suspicion, my assessment of the situation is that the Saudi authorities might have seen what happened in Benghazi because they have their own problems of internal dissent. And they know that opportunities, I mean, opportunists always sweep in on these kinds of demonstrations uh, to pursue their own agendas because there is all these there are theories about those who perpetuated the violence you know those who you know seized on the violence to uh, to murder the americans in benghazi so i don't think the saudi authorities can risk allowing demonstrations uh because there, there is no way you can determine who the opportunists are who the opponents you know of the saudi royal family who they are and what they might do if you unleash or you allow people to demonstrate. So I don't think it's the absence of a will, you know, to demonstrate on the part of the Saudi people that has eventuated in this. I think there might have been some kind of uh, of, of of repression or control, you know, uh, on the part of of very nervous Saudi Saudi officials, authorities. That's that's my own assessment of it. Okay, uh, Chris, you, you referred to something that I wanted to ask you to expand on that, which is that uh, where does someone's right end and where does the right of the other person begin? So, for instance, you're saying that uh, the, the fact that Americans have the First Amendment right and, and it's in conflict now with the right of people to worship their, their uh, religion and, and, and not to have you insult their, 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 their prophets. So you're saying that America should apologize, and and are you saying that that people should be controlled in terms of what what they do in their own country so that they don't they don't insult they, they don't offend people in other countries? No, actually not. You have to understand that this country is built on certain fundamental rights, um, one of which is the freedom of expression. However, freedom of expression doesn't mean that um, you should incite wars, incite protests, defend people, and stuff. So there's always a natural limit. So legally, as far as the United States is concerned, this guy has not broken any laws. But uh, morally, he has, uh, in the sense that he did put out a very insightful movie um, reasonably calculated to insult Muslims. It's out there running on the internet and using state um, um, sanctioned infrastructure. Uh, the United States could have at least maybe even tried to shut it down. Um, I understand that Google doesn't want to shut it down. 
Oh, they, they, they have, they have, uh, and and okay. just to, just to cut it short, uh, they, they actually arrested the man that made the movie uh, this morning, but for a different right. for a different reason. So, okay. uh, yeah, my question is, um, are you are you saying that because the demonstrators are dem demanding that he should be arrested, are you saying that if they didn't find him in violation of uh, his probation, he should still have been arrested for for moral offense or? Or what would be the solution? Because if yeah, well, I, yeah it, what, what would okay, be the solution? Yeah, the, the the United States is in, is in a very precarious situation. Okay. Because if the United States was looking for a referendum on its um, popularity post Arab Spring, I think they just had it. Um, you know, they are not popular. Um, Islam still has ideological differences with with Western <laughs> way of life. Yeah. And I think that the United States can do two things. Be aloof um, to the feeling of the Arab world so, or be more sensitive to it. I think that, yes, um, interrogating this guy and uh, trying to circumscribe his freedom of movement somewhat and make life uncomfortable to him, those are I know, reasonable ways to approach this without, without impinging, obviously, on his constitutional right to free speech. So I think that the U.S. is being responsible the way they're going about it, but I think that it may not be nearly enough. However, I'm not suggesting that the gentleman should be apprehended and put in jail for doing this, but the United States needs to address um, uh, what I, I may call the dignitary um, injury done to Muslims. Or, or Nehru, who said, um, uh, because civilized world is, from where Europeans or Westerners stand, it's always a shorthand for Western culture, Western civilization, Western ideologies, or Western ideals. And, and uh, yeah, forget the Indian statesman who said it would, be, it would be a good idea if it existed, right? Because there's no fundamental consensus about who defines or who defines civilization. Uh, but my understanding of, 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 of what should be at play here is that there should be certain fundamental benchmarks that would guarantee uh, uh, that would guarantee uh, certain freedoms you know certain freedoms and and there's the need you know i totally agree with chris that it's, it's a it's a balance a question of balance of sensibilities there should be need to balance these things how do countries go about uh, they, they can't control every individual you know this freedom of worship freedom of expression freedom of this freedom of that and and it's the totality of this freedoms insofar as they are guaranteed uh, in constitutions across the world that should be the basis you know of the so-called human civilization uh, uh, but that human civilization should or ought not to be defined exclusively as a shorthand for european or, or western values which would be what the european commission president would be that would be the perspective from which he is coming and it's 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 it's, it's part of uh, a certain cultural arrogance, you know, on the part of the West, and, and that hurts sensibilities uh, across the world. So even statements like that are problematic and could potentially lead to scenarios such as this, you know. Uh, but across the divide, uh, the ideological divide, the cultural divide, there should still be certain fundamentals that global institutions and, 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 and global leaders and global cultures should be able to forge you know to find a, a common ground now um uh, chris let me come back to you a demonstrator in tunis told uh, the bbc that uh, allah and prophet and the prophet are more important than my life now how do people get to that level in in their religious belief to um make the 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 prophet and the the god more important than their how how is it is it is this has something to do with with um education because I am imagining that the, the leaders and the children of these elites who run these countries, I don't think they are out there on the streets demonstrating. I, I don't think the two kids who are going to 
uh, appear on American, uh, the American embassy in, in a short while to look for visa. We're out there demonstrating. How do you, how do you connect? I mean, wh what is going on? Uh, who are people demonstrating and saying this? Is it, does it have anything to do with educational level or does it have anything to do with awareness or what is going on? Can you, can you answer that, please? I, I think I can. Yes, I do have some insight into it. I don't think we should get into the merits of Islam as a religion. Um, however, we do have fundamentalist groups and extremist groups just because someone makes an utterly senseless remark like that doesn't mean that that reflects on how uh, the majority of the world sees Islam. So I can understand that some people, yes, do feel passionately about their religion. And people in, in, in the Arab world and Muslims around the world tend to be quite passionate about Islam. However, what I should say, without getting into the merits of their religion, which I'm not a Muslim, is that um, what we saw, you should consider it a sort of a reprisal. So when we are talking about responsibility, it's a 360 degrees thing. There ought to be some reciprocity. I mean, extremists on the Islamic side have killed people, men people, murdered people in the name of religion. Uh -huh. Okay? And so here you have somebody from somewhere in California putting out an utterly senseless movie as his own way of getting back on Islam. I think that the Muslim world ought to take responsibility on, the, on their own side. Some of the senseless acts of violence being done in, in the name of extreme attitude towards religion. So it's that extremity or extremism that we should all condemn and we should condemn it on both sides. Um, the, 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 the moderate campaign around the world, I think it's going way too far. But, but Islam does have its ways and I think that maybe, um, maybe some leaders in authority are really using this as an opportunity to further incite anti-Western attitudes in their country. Has some of those um, extremist utterances. Uh, Pius, let me, let me come back to you. Um, I, I'm concerned that um, President, President Obama said that America is not going to withdraw from, from, uh, from the Middle East. It's not going to withdraw from the world. But we know that, that it's difficult to defend an embassy when you have thousands of people coming at the embassy. Now, my question is, Imagine a, a situation where America decides that this is not worth it. We're going to meet, withdraw from the Middle East. What will happen? Oh, wow. <laughs> well, that's a hypothetical. I, I don't think it's going to happen because uh, uh, there isn't going to be any chance in hell that an American president would risk some a symbolic shrinking of, of, of the American empire. I say empire for... Uh, for lack of a better way to 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 uh, to put it, yeah. But th there is um, but one thing though is I actually would love to see that hypothetical happen, if only to to be able to get a measure because there is certain American arrogance. You know, if you follow American politics, American political leaders when when they talk, the, the inevitability of America's leadership. If we leave that region, it will return to to the Middle Ages. It will return to the primitive era. So there is that things that always irks me. That it gets on my nerves when I hear America's political leaders talk like that. They they are they aren't capable. Of, of managing their own affairs, their own societies. It's only America's influence, America's America's presence, you know, in, in, in those places. And that's that's a consensus. It's, it's one thing that unites them across their own political divisions back home. It's that sense of, of I think it's still an, if, an offshoot of the manifest destiny. And, and, and it applies especially, most especially to the Arab world. Have this sense, if we leave Iraq, that would be the end of Iraq. If we leave Libya, if we leave uh, Egypt, if we leave, you know, and, and I've never heard any American official, you know, uh, say those things about their presence in, in, in Europe, in the Western world. I've never heard them say that, you know, if we closed uh, our base in Germany, for instance, you know, uh, 
uh, you know, our Air Force bases in, in Spain, in Germany, or, or maybe in Portugal, uh, there would be utter chaos and all that, you know. So they, 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 it would, it would be nice to see that happen and and, and see if the Arabs uh, would be able to take charge of their own destiny, you know. Uh, but um, the, the Americans believe that it would be total chaos. It would be uh, they would return to the primitive age and, and and something like that, you know. But no American president would would especially especially in the context of the global rise of China, Chinese expansion. So that they are going to stay. All right. I, I understand that a lot of our callers want to be involved in this discussion. So I'm going to uh, make an exception here and, and talk to one or two of them because they want to talk to Pius and Chris. Um, okay. let, me, let me give them the chance. Okay. okay. This person is named Kawi and he's in Australia. So, Kali, okay, please, can you um, talk to us? Welcome to Sahara TV. Welcome. Thank you very much, my brother. Okay. Yeah. What, what do you have to say? Do you have a question or a comment? Well, I have a comment. Um, regarding what's happening in Australia at the moment, um, the, the, we witnessed uh, a, a kind of a mini demonstration here in Sydney uh, where a bunch of Muslims uh, went out in the city uh, close to the American consulate to demonstrate. Uh, this um, demonstration was started as a result of uh, some SMS messages sent by a few Muslims uh, undisclosed by police and it escalated to the extent that some police officers were injured and some police cars were damaged. Uh, there were eight official arrests at this moment but as it, as, as it is at the moment things have calmed down, people have dispersed but they're still uh, rumbling on the TV and on the radio and everyone is talking about this situation. Um, I mean, talking from my understanding, based on Australian values here, um, I think the Australian people are really uh, uh, infuriated and angry with the present situation. Like, you know, what's going on? This is not a Muslim country, you know, and they have the guts to come out to to um to demonstrate uh, about, in about, such how many people, about how many people came out as you a know? result in the in just um, over the past two weeks there has been uh, a few arrests um of some also homegrown uh, terrorist uh, uh uh muslims here in australia who are trying to plan uh for some terrorist activities and they were captured uh, by police and the investigation is still going on so, but in my own view, regarding what is happening in uh, in Nigeria as a result of this uh, uh, movie that was released in America, um, I would like to say that, unfortunately, um, some Muslims have decided to pass to their hands, and they, they go out there, destroy property, attack innocent people, have something like this happen. Yeah, it's so someone, especially Christians, and, and you know, uh, are the ones that bear the brunt. Okay, okay, uh, caller, please. I have to stop you there. Thank you so much for calling yeah. us. Okay, let's go back to the guest, and and um, uh, I want them to. I want to go to Chris. I want Chris to uh, going from where the caller stopped in Nigeria. The reaction has been that there was an demonstration in Jos, and 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 there were demonstration in places like uh, Sokoto, but they were not major. So, Chris, I want, I want to ask you, why is it that yeah, the uh, Muslims didn't react the way uh, other parts of the world uh, reacted? Uh, what happened? I mean, there is some reaction going on. I, I think it's, um, for us, no matter how small it is, uh, it's still a cause for concern because there shouldn't be any. I would say that um, in Nigeria uh, are apprehensive of being roped into the Boko Haram menace, so I would say that there is a little bit of a fear factor there is in security um, out there on the streets looking for uprisings here and there. I would I would imagine that anyone who goes on a page like we've seen around the world might be in serious jeopardy of being apprehended and maybe even even killed. But I we are seeing what we think is a tame, tame reaction in Nigeria what's going on. I think also that Nigerians are becoming a little bit smarter. Um, there's some why if, if they cough in, in, in Benghazi, we get cold in Nigeria. Um, 
So there's, a, I think that the awareness of that may have something to do with what I should say is an attenuated response to this from Muslims in Nigeria. Um, so that's really my my point of view on that. But this is not over yet. Let's just the responses are beginning to trickle in. I hope that people are getting more and more responsible instead of um, blowing this up. Uh, people are working hard, especially at the top leadership level, to bring this to a close so the world can move on. Um, in response to what the last question he asked, it, it's a global community. I don't think that America can leave any part of the world right now. Um, there are kind of strong economic interests right in on any decision to withdraw from any part of the world. We know that. They know that. So it, it's not going to happen. But because it's a smaller world, that like you make a movie and put it on the internet, and within 15 minutes, somebody is responding to it from as far as um, um, that's just the nature of the world. I, I think it calls for a um, heightened sense of responsibility on everyone's side, on, on both the free world side and, and the slightly repressed um, Arab side. Um, so that's really my take on what's going on. Okay, uh, I will ask Pius the last question on this turn. See, we have other things we want to talk about. Uh, and my question is this. So, according to some analysis, it's, it's now that there is a kind of fight over the value system of the world in such a way that the, there should be a line that should not be crossed, you know, that don't insult the prophets and don't insult other people's religion. So, you know, how do you, who draws this line? And how do you cross different countries and enforce this kind of uh, rule? We've seen this before. The cartoon that was done in Europe that caused this demonstration. Because next, we're talking about in the next few months, something else will happen here, and we go through this. When do, when do we see a, a solution, and when does it stop? And where is the line, if, if there should be a line? Yeah. Rudolph, I, lo I lost you. I lost the last... Oh, oh, okay. No, I was, of sentences. Okay, I was saying, I was saying, you know, it wanted to be this kind of uh, agreement that there should be a line drawn and you know, nobody should cross. And my question is, who draws the line? Where should that line be? Uh, because we, we've seen this many times. Somebody somewhere with someone else that will lead to demonstrations across uh, the world. So. Yeah, I, I, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's a, again, you, you're taking me back to the, uh, the, the clash of civilizations uh, uh, theme, the, the clash of cultures, the, 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 the seeming inevitability of, 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 of divisions between the, the, the West and the East, you know, East is East, South is North, or the West is West, West and, and the, two shall not, the two shall not meet. Where historically, they have always been those lines, you know, cultural lines, ideological lines, and, and, and who draws them is the person, you know, and who is the, the Gatling gun. Who, that's, that's who gets to define who, who the, 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 the weapons of coercion, the weapons of persuasion, you know, that, that those are the people who get to define uh, what ultimately becomes global, global cultures, global values, and, that, and, 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 and we know it's the West. We know it's the West, but there is a responsibility that which comes, and it goes, uh, which comes with the the ability to draw this line. If you're the the the, 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 the lines in terms of of, of what constitutes global cultures, global values, and uh, there, there is a responsibility that comes with, it, and it goes right back, slap back into what Chris was saying. Yes. Uh, how do you draw these lines, and at the same time remain sensitive? have sufficient awareness of other values other cultures and be sensitive to what they hold there you know how, how do you how do you not go about thinking that the, that the entire world uh, will be defined by by coca cola and, and, and mcdonald's even if they don't have the economic wherewithin to, to resist these cultural impositions uh what role should you play as the bigger in global cultural politics and the politics of values what role do you play in terms of being responsible 
obvious to the other people whose domains and whose, whose territories uh, you often are forced into for economic economic reasons. So yeah, the answer is clear. The West still defines it. There is this sense. There is this sense that when China is beginning to encroach upon those territories and, and is beginning to draw other lines. So there are will always be lines. And who has the economic might? Who has the the political might? Who has the uh, so that there are the people who get to draw those those lines, and, and, and so there is a politics of sensitivity and sensibility that should come in there, and and, and, and people should just uh, uh, try to to respect that and to live with the fact that no matter how hard, no matter how dominant you know a country is. Uh, politically, economically, militarily, there will always be guys out there, other cultures, other zones, other ideologies, who are not going to accept you know, the finality or, or the inevitability of one culture uh, getting to draw the lines and, and, and defining what it means to be human, what it means to be civilized. There will always be guys out there who will never accept the finality or the inevitability of one country, one nation, one people who should be able to define that. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, we, we have a caller that we talk about this topic and then we move to another topic. You are calling us from Chicago. Welcome to Sahara TV. Yes. Uh, hi. Yeah. Well, thanks. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. So what, what's, what's the so a question yeah, for my, our guests? My, my quick contribution is this. I mean, it is, it is almost unbelievable that, you know, an action of one person in one part of the world could actually get to this kind of uh, reaction. And, and to a very large extent, justified reaction, as far as I'm concerned. But I guess, they, you know, specific to the people that lost their lives. I mean, you look at the American military that was killed in, you know, during this conflict. I mean, this is the guy that I don't even know how the U.S. is going to replace somebody like that. In the and, and and so that kind of brings me then to the point about religious freedom. We talk about religious freedom, but what about religious denigration? I mean. If, if people are talk, saying that what this guy, this movie maker, did, does not qualify for hatred, I don't know what it is. I mean, what is the difference between what it is? Because there is such an iota of truth in that video. So what what would happen tomorrow if I, as a Muslim, decide to do a movie portraying Jesus Christ as an armed robber? Okay, you know, uh, Allah, Allah, sorry, yeah. uh, your audio is not very good. So we are going to we are going to uh, call you back. And I want to ask all our viewers, and, and I know a lot of people are trying to call us. We will take a Skype call period for an hour after this. But let me talk to our guests about other things happening in Nigeria. Okay, so be patient. In about 15 minutes, we are going to make Skype calls, and you call us, and we discuss this. So let me go back to you, Chris. Um, yesterday, the minister, former minister of Interior, Interior Affairs, uh, Captain Emmanuel Hanacho, was arrested uh, in connection with, with um, oil theft. Um, what does that mean? Does that mean that we are really getting serious about dealing with corruption, or the, what, what is your take? Are you still there? Can you, hear you? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, okay go ahead. What, what else is here in Nigeria? Is I mean, um, is this the most ear tingling thing we need to know about corruption in Nigeria? This is really typical Nigeria. Um, we hit it down on our country in in, in, a, in an audience like this, but, but Nigeria is really no more than a criminal enterprise. Uh, we have people in high and low places um, giving with all the amount of money, stealing the public coffers dry. And so when, so I'm, I'm not to, to issues like this. I mean, wasn't it the other day who, who took a bribe of millions of dollars just to falsify a report? Um, where do you may begin to make a catalog of some of the most egregious, some of the most ridiculous um, acts of, of, of public Debris that's going on in Nigeria. So I wasn't surprised at Captain Iyanacho. Um, it's a good thing that they caught him. I'm even surprised that they mentioned that he has to die himself. All the bank holders of the world, the bank leaders, all of these people that, that have been fingered in one way or the other in official action, what became of them? So, so it's not that Captain Iyanacho has been caught, it's that 12 months from now, it's going to be someone else, and Captain Yana Joe um, will have his body and he'll move on to something else. And then five years from now, he's, he's going to get awarded a national honor 
this is how Nigeria operates. Yeah. But I really don't see anything different. Uh, Pius, let me come to you. D is, does that mean yeah. anything? Um, no, 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 no. I've, I've, I've lost confidence totally in, uh, in the so-called um, anti-corruption. I, I don't even know what name to call it. You know, I almost feel like I'm so for, for what's, what's, what's the captain, what's, what's his name again? Sorry, Rudolph, remind me. Uh, yeah, I, I almost feel sorry for him. <laughs> in the, that's how cynical I am, you know, that, you know, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the political thieves and corrupt people, you know, uh, he's the one who's gotten caught, right? Yeah. Because then, you know, you, we, we all know what they do, all of them, you know, he's no worse than the current minister of petroleum resources, you know, uh, Alison Madi. We, we all know these stories, you know, it's, it's the political tribe and they are all across the board. We, we all know. So whoever gets caught, you know, it's, 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 it's the unfortunate person. You know, I've, I've lost total balance and there's such thing as any anti-corruption. You know, uh, you'll hear this, it'll be, it'll be in the news, maybe another 24 to 48 hours. Uh, you know, Ibrahim Lamode will make some noise. If he, if he even gets to make some noise, he will not see the end of it. So I'm not I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed at all. Okay. Um, we, we have like three more minutes left for this yeah. segment. So I'll uh, uh, touch on a few topics and I'll just mention the topic and I'll, I'll ask you to give me your take. Chris, let me mm. start with you. The 5,000 Naira note, friend, uh, are you in support or are you against that uh, and why? Uh, briefly. Uh, well, gosh, I can't. Okay, do I, how much? Okay, um, I think I'm totally against it. He doesn't need the argument. For, for it, don't hold any water. If portability is the issue, there are other ways um, to, do, do, to, to, to do that without um, injecting some inflationary psychology into uh, the struggling Nigerian currency. I'm totally against it, and I don't think that um, the intentions behind that uh, have been made clear yet. Let me keep it at that, that, and I hope I, I have an opportunity to come back to this topic. No, you well, uh, uh, Paris, let me let me go to uh, patient Jonathan, who is uh, in the hospital somewhere yeah. in Germany. What does that say about the country, Nigeria, that um, after many, many years, you know, after all the commentaries you write, you complain, and everybody complains, and it continues? What, 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 should, what should people do? What's the solution to this? You know, it almost gets you to a state of despondency. You know, it, it, it's almost... Nigeria almost dehumanizes you in the sense that here is somebody who is ill, right? So at, at the fundamental human level, it, it should evoke some feelings of passion in one, right? But but the way they have so dehumanized the majority of our citizenry it makes it difficult for you to even, you know, to, to, to even sympathize and, and 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 you know that they are a victim of the circumstances the very conditions that they create back home you know it's 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 everything about this thing is shameful right the way they have managed the info the sheer rudeness of, of thinking that we are going to foot the bill of someone who isn't even recognized in the constitution but we have the right to know anything you look put into the camera and you lie to the Nigerian people, you won't develop the infrastructure at home and you want to enjoy those things. So I don't, I don't even know where to start with this, but I think it's got to come to a time where the people themselves uh, must begin. You know, these kinds of protests that we see, they, nothing stops Nigerians from rising up uh, uh, on the scale of high Nigeria just for one issue. We don't want government officials and their families going out to seek med on, on medical saf safaris abroad at our expense. You know, it, 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 it's got to come to that, otherwise it will never stop. I mean, look, just look at it this year. David Mark went, went, went to Israel, came back and had an airport, a shameful airport reception where, 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 I mean, we even had government, serving government ministers in their duty posts to go and welcome him for going on an irresponsible medical trip abroad. And the same things happen here. So it's, 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 I think it's up to the to really stand up. It's got to come to that point where they, they, they drop massively to protest against these kinds of, 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 um, of irresponsibility on the part of, of 
that's, that's my take on it. All right. Uh, one last question to you, Chris. Uh, Chris, um, I, we just saw the list of people who are going to receive your honors. Uh, and, uh, um, and Chris, uh, I didn't see your name. So what, what was the book on, on the list? Uh, are they, um, what, do, what is the text? You know, the my, my take is we continue to be ridiculous, as always. Um, it, it doesn't have any merit anymore. It's like the Gamsden Senior Advocate of Nigeria. Uh, the national honors really doesn't inspire any any respect to the recipients because we, we see a list of well-known corrupt individuals whose corrupt practices are known, and, and the government is ignoring them. And so you ask yourself, what message are we really sending to the really population? Okay, we're sending a message to them that it's okay to be corrupt because someday if you play a card, well, you can't be nationally honored. So I've always said that Nigeria is a country where anything that's ridiculous is most welcome. And, and that's exactly what we've seen after I saw Mike at Enesia. I lost complete interest in this um, If I ever get nominated, I'll do exactly what um, our good friend. Chino Achebe has done. I, I turn it down for what it is. It's not what the paper that is written on, and that's just the bottom line on that. Uh, Chris, one final. Um, no, uh, uh, one final question. You wrote a book. You called uh, "You Are Not a Country, Africa." Is yeah. Nigeria a country? It certainly isn't. <laughs> it pretends to be, but it's it's got too many. Th it's a country. It, it could be a country. It's an unfinished product, you know. It's a it's a hodgepodge put together by the politicians, and it's it's got too many too many fault lines for it to be defined now as a. So I prefer to remain at the level of of, of geographical expression. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, that was, uh, we had uh, Chris uh, and Yedebe. Chris, uh, thank you so much for coming on Sahara uh, TV. Uh, sorry, uh, I'm, getting a, I'm getting a message that the same guy, the caller from Nigeria that really wanted to talk to uh, you guys. So let me, let me just hear from... From, 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 from Please, hold on, please. Okay, uh, hello. Adam? Hello. Yeah, welcome Hello. to Sahara TV. Yeah. Hello? Hello. Yeah, welcome. You can speak up. What, what do you have to say? Yeah, about the movie. Okay. Yeah. Uh, to me, the Americans knew it. They did it purposely because I think they have a, a motive pertaining this thing because anything does against Islam or the Prophet, peace be upon him, is going to be a crash in the world. Now, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You said the Americans. Are you saying the American yeah. government or the individual yeah, who did it? The, the, the movie was from the, it, it is in the U.S. they made the movie, isn't it? Who, who made the movie? Uh, is it Sam, uh, Sam Bali? Uh, he based in the U.S. Yeah, yeah. Does that mean that America made the movie or that individual made the movie? But even, if, even if America did not make it or they didn't make the movie, at least they have an intention on it. Because they, who are they there? The Americans? They, they, yeah, they're supposed to edit and know what is being done in their country. Okay, wait. Well, if you are, if least, you if where you are, you make a movie where you are. Yeah, is Nigeria yeah. responsible for what you are doing? Yeah, Nigeria is not be protected with the National Broadcasting Commission (NBC) okay. and the Census Board. Okay. Anything that will bring a problem uh, and or you, contradiction. And you, you believe that America is the way Nigeria works? I, yeah, at least because I, I can re, I can see that Nigeria practices almost all what the, the, the system of government and the federalism and uh, the constitution itself okay only some few all right continue so to me if they don't have a there is a motive behind it and even if the americans were not uh, they were not aware there is an instance whereby now look at sudan for example let me just go back to sudan america have been trying always to go into sudan now with this crisis they are sending their marines to sudan and yemen so with all this without this crisis they wouldn't even have ways of going into those countries so, so you believe that they created this crisis so that they will yeah, they will get into sudan like, uh, all right all right yes. okay um um hold on okay we are going to yes. do this discussion with you but i want to thank our guests because they've been with us for a long time i want to thank them for okay. joining us uh chris thank you so much for joining us Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, and Pius, thank you so much. We appreciate this.
Thank, thanks, Rudolph. All right. So we are going to continue this discussion. So do Skype call us, and uh, it's op open to everybody. Call us. Here. Let's have this discussion and talk about what's going on around the world. We we'll take a brief break, and then um, we are going to come back. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.